know that Satan has come to buffet you <laughs> and he'll sift you as wheat if he can and there's an enemy of our soul and there's an enemy to truth out there this morning that has come against Christianity but I, I was looking mom was talking in Sunday school and the Lord had my thoughts in another place where Jesus had told the disciples, the world cannot hate you. 
meaning we're of this world, we're creatures of this world, that we were born again, but it hates me. Jesus was speaking this, it's in red in your Bible. Jesus said, it, but it hates me because I bring judgment to its, its um, I reveal it, its sinfulness to itself. Now when you get born again, amen, Christ dwells inside of us, amen. So whether you've got the target on your back or your target's inside of you, you're targeted this morning. The enemy does not like the Jesus we serve. And I'm going to speak to you this morning, amen, about how the Antichrist opposes Christ, amen. There, there is a distinction, and there is a, um, a method, if you will, a target that the enemy is bringing uh, this battle, this warfare too. How many are seeing all the absolute garbage um, that's going on in this country alone? And I, and I, listen, I know that it's in the world. I know that there are churches and other. I know my pastor friends in the Philippines um, that we talk to and have conversation with. They're constantly under opposition. I remember a time or two when um, the brother over in India, I can't, the brother Blesson, um says, Pastor, could you not say these words in your text because it brings government opposition to our front door? Now, now listen, it's just a simple thing that the world um, hates Jesus. The system of the world hates Jesus. But Jesus said this to you and I, that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. And so there is a conflict in you and I. We don't want to be beaten, badgered, opposed, knocked down, hated. Everybody wants to be loved, but Jesus inside of us draws us to him, draws us to his truth, draws us to his duty. Amen. I stand before you and I know you sit before me a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. I'm bound to him. There's something about this Lord, amen, that I did not find out in that world. I have peace when peace can elude most people. We find joy. I, I've contended this so many times. You can put a group of Christians around a pile of dirt in the middle of that parking lot. And it's not going to be very long. We're going to be laughing. Why? Because God gives us an ability to have joy in the midst of turmoil. God gives us the ability to have things that the world does not possess because of the blessing. Well, listen to me this morning. We're living in a time... Um, I'm going to refer scripture here in a moment that the world, the system of the world has come against Christ. How many feel like those attacks are personal this morning? I do. I feel like, boy, they hate me. It's because we take it that way. I love my Lord so much. If he was standing next to me, I would want to shield him from what's going on in this world. That's our nature as human beings. We don't need to shield the Lord. He said, listen, you don't, you, the world can't hate you. It hates me. But he knew what was going to happen. And God began to, by the system that he gave us to write the word. The Bible says this, that he moved, men were moved on by the Holy Spirit to write what God. So every word in these tables, every word in this Bible comes from an unction of God through the Holy Spirit to men's ears. They wrote. Amen. And as they wrote. God knew what he was giving you and I. Turn your Bibles this morning. Matthew. Amen. Matthew chapter 24. And then I'm just going to read one scripture out of 1 John. You won't need to turn there if you don't want to. Amen. You can. I'll tell you what. Let's do it together. We'll just do it that way. 1 John 2 and 18. And then we're going to first read out of Matthew 24. Amen. Verses 11 through 14. This is our Lord speaking to us this morning. And many false prophets shall rise. Now listen to what the Lord is saying to you this morning. Jesus is saying this to the ears of his body. Hallelujah. And shall deceive many. Amen. It's not a warning that it could happen. Jesus said they're going to succeed at deceiving people. Amen. And because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that endures unto the end the same shall be saved 
And this gospel, this gospel that we're talking about this morning, that, that ministers are supposed to be preaching from the pulpit this morning, Amen. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Turn your Bible back over to 1 John this morning, chapter 2 and verse 18. Praise the Lord. Little children, I want you to hear this this morning. God's not talking to just the church, but He's talking to anybody that's going to pay attention to Him. Little children, it is the last time. As you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists. Now I'm going to pause there. I'm going to read that again, but you hear this. When this was written, the word was written by the Spirit giving unction was thousands of years back. And the Lord said, even now. Amen. Even now there are many antichrists, whereby we know that this is the last time. Hallelujah. I, I want to tell you this morning, the word antichrist, amen, it means in direct opposition, if you will. There, there is no uh, common ground between the antichrist and Christ. But how many understand this this morning? That when you had children and they were growing up and you told them, I always want you to tell me the truth. If you tell me the truth, you won't get in trouble. I, I've taught my daughters that. You tell the truth, you won't get in trouble. You tell me a lie, your hind end's mine. Amen. And they would tell me the truth and tell me the truth until they felt something was so egregiously bad and they would tell you a half truth. Yeah. What'd you do? Did you let them slide? Did you bust that rear end? Hello? Now, now half truth in my eyes, and I'm here to tell you in God's eyes, amen, half truths are lies. Amen. Jesus did not come to give me half of a gospel, to give me half a salvation. He gave me all full. Amen. I, I want to talk to you this morning about the opposition that we're in this morning. So every single thing that Jesus is today, the Antichrist or the spirit of Antichrist is in direct opposition. Can I tell you then this morning, there are some men that are standing in a pulpit preaching a half truth. Do you know what we call them? Do you know what God calls them rather? Amen. False prophets. This is what the Lord was warning way back then and he is now. I want to, I took time to print this out. Amen. This morning, I want to give you just some names of what Jesus was called in the Bible. I want you to keep in mind this this morning, that the word Antichrist means Satan or the Antichrist or the spirit of Antichrist. And I'm going to go a little bit into that also here in a moment. Opposes Jesus. Opposes who Jesus is. Jesus is an advocate. The Antichrist is not an advocate. Amen. He is almighty. Alpha. Omega. He is the Amen. He is an apostle, apostle and high priest, arm of the Lord, author and finisher of our faith, author of eternal salvation, beginning and the end, beginning of the creation of God, beloved son, branch, bread of God, bread of life, bridegroom, bright and morning star, captain of salvation. Listen, the Bible says this this morning. I'll give you scripture reference for him. Hallelujah. Chief Cornerstone, amen. Chief Shepherd this morning, head over all things to the church. I can pause right there and tell you they despise that title this morning. They do not want somebody telling them what they can and can't. I have been told directly, I don't want to serve a God like you serve. Well, friend, I don't serve a God. I serve the God. And the God loves you so much that he gave us Jesus Christ that we might be redeemed. So now they're in direct opposition to whom Jesus is. Hallelujah. He is the heir of all things. High priest, holy child, holy one of God, holy one of Israel, the holy one, hope, horn of salvation. I am image of God, Emmanuel, Jehovah, 
Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, judge, judge of Israel, king of Israel, king of kings, king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, king, lamb of God, lamb without blemish, lamb, last Adam. <laughs> People get all shook up when you talk about Adam's. Listen, sin came in and sin got a way out. Hallelujah. And thank God for the last Adam. Praise the Lord. He is the Prince of Peace. The prophet, propitiation for our sins. Rabbi, Rabboni, Redeemer. I want you to hear me this morning. The enemy is in opposition to your redemption today. When the enemy wants to fight you and tell you, listen, I got up off that altar. I was born again. I wanted to shout that to everybody. It wasn't too long after that. The enemy was whispering to my ear. You didn't get what you really thought you got. You better tone it down a little bit. You're still the same man that you've always been. You see what happened? The spirit of Antichrist began to whisper into your ear and tell you, you didn't get what you thought you got. Yeah. Hallelujah. We were talking in Sunday school this morning about faith. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, faith goes and addresses mommy issues. But one of the hardest things to deal with because you love her, you respect her, and there's no way in the world you're going to come against her. But listen to me, the greater opposition there was that either she's going to go to heaven or she's going to go to hell. We have to get over sometime what we see with our eyes and understand that the Spirit of God invoked me to do a, a job, a task from this earth, and that is to represent Christ as we walk daily. Not easy sometimes. Amen. The enemy opposes you. He opposes the righteous, the rock, the root, rose of Sharon, the Savior, second man, seed of woman. Amen. Shepherd and bishop of souls, son of God, son of man, son of the blessed. Son, I'm, I'm getting down to one here that I'm just going to jump at you with. Amen. Son of righteousness, teacher, the just one, the life. Amen. I lost one of my pages. Amen. Here's the one I wanted to tell you about. The truth. Jesus is truth. Now listen to this definition this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. The word antichrist. A personal opponent of Christ expected to appear before the end of the world. The battle between Christ and and the Antichrist, one. Number two, an Antichrist refers to people prophesied by the Bible to oppose Jesus Christ and substitute themselves or their beliefs and opinions in Christ's place before the second coming. I begin to understand why all these things are happening on the television right now. Folks, listen to me. I, I, sometimes if you can say what you want, it seems like the masses will follow what's being dangled up before them quicker than anybody. And if everybody has shown up here, well, there's really no Jesus, there's really no hell, there's really nothing. All we're doing is playing this game, and I'm seeing it pop up all over the place. They're trying to demean Jesus. They're trying to discredit Jesus. They're trying to bring Jesus down to man's level. Listen to me. There's some vulgar, vulgar things that went on out in Los Angeles at Dodger Stadium in a parking lot where a, cry, a cross was elevated and a woman uh, that was scantily clad got up and began to gyrate around the person that they had on that cross. Amen. And do really, really vile and vulgar things. Listen to me, folks. That's not a, uh, an attack necessarily against you and I, but it is against the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what it's against. It's against the truth. Jesus was without sin. He was sinless, glory to God. Jesus is truth. Truth sets a man free. Understand then the battle that we're facing today. It is a spiritual warfare that you cannot go out and flail. Listen, somebody told me at work this week what we should do. I saw that, she said, and what we should do is just line them up and kill everybody. Folks, that's not what we should do. That's not what Jesus would do. Jesus would set up and begin to live and teach and preach truth and love that enemy. Glory to God. Listen, they're going to either die in their sins or they're going to get repentance for their sins. But Jesus died for that vulgar sinner. 
I was that vulgar sinner. You were that vulgar sinner at one point in our life. And the grace and the mercy of God was extended our way. Listen to me, folks. We're in the time, the last of the last day. The Antichrist can be named overnight because of mass media. Our eyes should be looked toward the eastern sky right now without fail. You should wake up in the morning and tell yourself, my God, this could be the day, this could be the hour that Jesus amen, comes back from the church, raptures her home. Listen to me, church. There's coming a judgment on this earth. But listen to me right now, right now. God said you are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. The last words in Matthew chapter 24 this morning. Amen. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all. Let me just make it simple for you. There's going to be a man of God that has tread and trod his foot. Amen. Sometimes against their will. God, this is hard. This is what everybody's going to tread every country known to mankind in this world. Every kingdom that's ever been set up is going to have the witness of Jesus Christ brought to it, whether it accepts it or whether it rejects it this morning. Listen to me, folks. We're in a spiritual warfare. The spirit of Antichrist has lost his fear to hide. Now he's come out in the open. I wonder so many times, Lord, what do we do? Amen. I heard people talking this morning in Sunday school class. You know, things I faced were hard. They were insurmountable. I could lose faith. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy to walk. Amen. Those years knowing my mama's not born again. And every time she began to approach her mama, she felt that dark get in her heart and just realized I got to shut down. I can't do nothing here. I'm scared. I'm whatever. And believe me when I tell you this, I know my enemy. He perched up on that on that uh, dear sister's shoulder and told her how much mom's going to split hell wide open. I got news for you folks. Listen to what I'm telling you. The effectual fervent prayer of righteous men avails much. You don't go to bed without calling their name. Amen. Before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I said he hears and he answers prayer. What you're facing out in that world today is somebody challenging your ability to pray. Somebody challenging your ability to stand in this community or this time that we stand in today when the fight has uh, busted itself out and come right to our faith. What do we do? We maintain Jesus Christ and this glorious gospel without fail. We don't blink. And we don't lay down and quit. Glory to God. My Bible tells me he that endures to the end the same shall be saved. Something's got to fire up inside of us and realize this spiritual warfare is not going to get uh, uh, won or challenged at all by sitting back and watching it. Amen. Prayer. That word must get inside of you. I remember my wife would come home and then during some of that I was not right with the Lord. She would tell me them stories. Man, I go to bed scared to death. Well, I knew, I knew God's real and I knew hell's real. And I couldn't understand why I couldn't make my mind up to serve the Lord. I just couldn't understand why I didn't have the strength to do that. I couldn't understand why it kept drawing me out to the same thing. I thought, Lord, and, and then it's like one day my mind came to me. And I'm like, why am I sitting here? I went to bed that night and I've shared this story so many times with you, but I woke up on that Saturday, I was done. I knew, man, if church was today, I was born again then. Knowing what I know, I should have knelt down at that breakfast table with them girls and mama and prayed through right then and there. But listen to me, church, I announced I was done running. Christ was pursuing me. Whether you think he is or whether you think he's not, your prayer means something this morning. I said your faith means something this morning. When you pray about a child, don't you stop mentioning his name. Don't you dare stop giving. Don't you give up on him or her. Amen. But you pray that much more consistently and you love them and you demonstrate Jesus Christ to them and watch them. Listen to me. All the world is strong out there. But how many of you have ever had the Holy Ghost 
Ghost began to deal with you. I'll tell you, I began to tremble. I began to shake before. I was in a bar one time. Had a drink coming up to my mouth. I shook so violently that it spilled. Glory to God. I set it down and I did not partake because I was so scared about what God, the judgment could bring upon me. Listen to me. Just the Holy Ghost dealing with me because God loved me. We wonder sometimes, God, will you deal with men that way? Absolutely, he will. Some of them he brings out with fear. I was one. Amen. I felt like the Lord didn't like me for a while. But I got news for you. The Lord loved me. I said the Lord burned in his heart for the love for me. I know my king this morning and this antichrist spirit that is vaunting itself against us, the knowledge of us, everything that you set out to do. Listen to me. Our children, it seems that it's coming against. I got news for you. I've been praying about this and God is going to raise a standard up and show them point blank. Parents are not willing to give up on our children. That isn't going to come from worldly parents. That's going to come from men and women praying for God to, to set their children free. Mama stole from me in Sunday school class this morning. And, in that school, the Holy Spirit just put a red awning right over top of them. It said, you're not going to touch this one right here. You're not going to touch this one right here. But how many of you know I said the effectual fervent prayer of righteous men? God didn't tell you, you just pray for your own. I'm praying for deliverance for my country. I'm praying for deliverance for revival worldwide. We've got brothers and sisters that are preaching the gospel in foreign countries that are under great opposition this morning. The enemy wants to shut them down as well as the enemy wants to shut you and I down. Amen. He knows he can't shut a church down, so he's going to come against your faith. This is the spirit of Antichrist vaunting itself against the knowledge of Christ in your life. Making you feel like my prayers are worthless. Hear what I'm telling you this morning. Making you feel like my service to God means nothing. I can say all day long I'm a Christian, but people ridicule me and down me. Ridicule and down you all they want to. You're not saved by knowledge, you're saved by faith. Did you hear me this morning? I said, you're saved by faith. Susie, I don't know how long it's been since you felt what you felt this weekend, but I could tell by the sound of her voice, excitement had come into her. Amen. A hope had come into her that God's going to do a work in here. Yeah, you've got to do your part. Yeah, you've got to do I get that. Amen. I got to get up out of bed in the morning. Amen. I got to, we got to go face some things in this world. He didn't tell me I was going to have to lightly go through some things. He said, you're going to have to endure. But can I tell you what God said? I believe it's back in Revelations 21, maybe. The bride has made herself ready. Let me repeat that to you. The bride <laughs> has made herself ready. Something inside of you is not going to be moved when the enemy comes knocking on your door and says you're not going to. Something is getting rooted down inside of you that realizes my prayers are not going unheard, but God hears every last one of them. And I am encouraged this morning. I am lifted in my spirit this morning. Amen. I didn't know who it was at first. Somebody came and prayed for me up here this morning and I realized it was Brother Ed and I felt the Lord release me into it's going to be all right amen I felt the Lord release me into it's going to be all right amen not necessarily into I just healed you point blank but it's going to be all right if God be for you who can be against you this morning you see, you're fighting real battles and your prayer life cannot wane during these times. Amen. It cannot go away. And I'm going to close with this this morning. I realize we're over and that's all right. Fantastic worship this morning. Amen.
Turn your Bibles back to Proverbs. Get in here. I want you to lay your eyes on these scriptures. We'll never succeed as a body or as a church without the love of God in our hearts. Therefore, there are some things that are always going to have to get out of me because I'm just a man and watch your face applies to me and mine and because we react, we say things, we, yes. we, and listen, I shared with my wife, man, my daughters didn't need a mood ring. They had faces and eyes. We knew just how they felt. Amen. I want you as a body of Christ to realize this, that whether you're inside this house or whether you're outside, you walk the same. You don't put on a show when you come into the house of God and live somewhere else out there. That's the spirit of Antichrist. I want you to hear me. I'm not, I'm not casting stones at people. I'm telling you this, that that spirit is in opposition to the truth of Christ. That's what it is. Amen. And the spirit of Antichrist, and the, the word tells us that they're already in the world. So there's opposition. Now, now don't take me wrong, and I know it's, it's just June to us right now. But evidently, our country has deemed it Pride Month. And now you can be proud of your gay, of your homosexuality, but not Christianity. And if somebody says something about that or stands up or voices, you, you're the one that gets put under the microscope. I got news for you, folks. There's no law against truth. Amen. Listen to this. Proverbs chapter 6. I, I did, maybe I didn't get you a chapter. Proverbs 6, and I want to start reading it verse 16. And many of you know these things, but I want to go over it again. Amen. Proverbs 6, and starting at verse 16. These six things, these six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. And believe me, I'm not talking about red bloodshed. I'm talking about spiritual murdering. I'm talking about spiritual bloodshed. Hallelujah. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. Now I want you to pay attention to this because this is the body of Christ. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. Amen. There's guidelines God's given us all through this Bible. And I don't mean to tell you that it's a set of rules, but let me tell you something. Jesus didn't have to discuss with the disciples why he was doing good things. But everything I do, I saw my father. That's who he is. That's his person. That's whom Christ is. Satan will never hear me clearly this morning tell you to do anything good. Satan will never tell you, minister to the poor. Satan will never tell you, give of your time and of yourself. Satan will tell you, you don't have time for that. That's your hard-earned money. I got news for you. What I have is because God has poured into me. And I am so very thankful for the home that I have. And, and I'm thankful my wife has been changed to understand we're not going to move. I, I want to be buried in the backyard. I don't want to move ever. I don't like to move, but I feel like God put me somewhere. I feel like God planted me somewhere. There was a time I was very discouraged in ministry. And I got in my car one Sunday morning and I shut that door. And I told them, I feel like just driving till my feet hit water. And I set up an interview in another church in another state. My wife was quiet and she didn't say much. She said, I'll go where you go, I love you. And I had it set up, had it ready to go out there. And the Lord shut me down. He said, I didn't put you out there, I put you right here. And a little bit begrudgingly, but then I'm like, all right, Lord, I'll just stay and I'll see what you're going to do. And to this moment right here, Sister Gordon, after the Lord revealed, I wouldn't trade this place for the world. 
I wouldn't trade where I am for the biggest mansion in this earth right now because I know I am where the Lord Jesus Christ put me. And I know I am seeing the fruits of his promises come to be right here. I'm thankful what God is doing in our midst. Let me urge you and admonish you this morning. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Your labor is not in vain this morning. God sees every, God sees your tears. I, I shared with the sister back here in the back. She was telling me some things that were going wrong in her life. And I, I felt the unction of the spirit. Pray right now. Amen. Pray right now. You know why? Because sometimes the enemy likes to take our minds and run with them. Amen. And I'm not here to see anybody run over by the enemy. I'm here to see somebody trample on his head this morning. And I'm thankful for the promises of God. They give us strength. They edify us. Now listen to me. What you have inside of you is Jesus Christ. And the opposition hates what that is. But did you read in here anywhere where it said, and the Antichrist has defeated Jesus Christ. Can you read in here anywhere where it said the Antichrist has won a great victory? Nor can I. And I tell you, as a man of God and as the leader of this wonderful house, put your shoulders back and your head up in the spirit and walk uprightly before God. God called you this morning. God empowers you this morning. God sustains you this morning. God gave you life this morning. God gave you your family this morning. God blessed you with your children this morning. God gives your income. God sustains the very air that we breathe this morning. Listen to me. I'll go on all morning alone to tell you what God has given you. But you do not have to bow down to the enemy in no circumstance. You stand with your head up and understand if God be for me. If this God be for me, who can be against me? Now, listen, if we need to go toe to toe with it, and I feel like it this morning sometimes, I'm not going to swing at it, but I'll tell you right now, I'll humble myself before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and know his truth will set men free. By the uplifted hand, I'm going to see how many of you are praying for lost loved ones this morning. Let you lift your hands. You've got somebody in your life that's not born again, that you want them born again, I'm going to see your hands. Amen. You know why? Because we love them. Can I tell you how much more God loves them? Folks, listen to me. Don't you stop calling their names out. Don't you stop lifting them in prayer. Don't you stop loving them. Don't you stop at all being you around them. You embrace what God has put in your life and know that he will be the victor in the end. Let's stand this morning. So wonderful to be in the house of God today.